Hello there, and welcome back. Now today marks the anniversary, the 46th anniversary, of the official release of Physical Graffiti, what is one of my favourite albums ever released, and what arguably can be considered one of the greatest studio album recordings of all time. Now before we get into all the praise, all the lows, all the highs, and everything I have to say about the album itself, let's set the scene. Because it has been 46 years and a lot of you out there weren't there. You don't have all the juicy context. I wasn't there either, but I've read up about the topic and I just asked my mum to tell me the story. So... So we're in 1975. Led Zeppelin has just released their fifth album, Houses of the Holy, and they're pretty much considered the greatest, or at least the biggest, band at the time. To the point where physical graffiti went platinum on pre-orders alone, there was so much hype for the band. And arguably, even throughout all the success, this can sort of be seen as one of the low points for the band as a group of individuals. The recording of the studio album had been interrupted once and scrapped because John Paul Jones was threatening to leave the band and he was tired of touring and wanted to go do his own thing. But then, changed his mind. Jimmy Page and John Bonham's problem with addiction had continued to deteriorate to the point where John Bonham needed to wear adult nappies when he was recording just to make sure nothing untoward happened. And this was kind of at the stage where everyone was starting to think that Jimmy Page's obsession with the mysticism and occult had sort of gotten the best of him if that makes sense. But through all this, the pure musicianship of these four individuals who'd gotten together six years earlier to record Led Zeppelin 1 was strong enough to keep the ball rolling. Physical Graffiti is by some considered to be the crowning achievement of Led Zeppelin as band, even considered an evolution on Led Zeppelin 4, which by many, and for good reason, is considered to be Led Zeppelin's best album. But through the thick and thin of it all, the same group of blokes, session musicians, brilliant solo acts, and just talented dudes, were still capable of getting together, start playing, and once the music kind of got rolling, they'd start recording, and... and we have the luxury of hearing the end result. And mind you, my young chaps, chapettes, if you found anything that I've said so far interesting in any way, please do consider subscribing down below. I know that uh, a little reminder can be quite helpful if you're enjoying what's going on. Before we dive into this discussion any further, please grab your caffeinated beverage. Don't spill it all over yourself as I just did. Rather, spill it on the inside of your mouth. And caffeine. Up. To highlight physical graffiti, I think the easiest way is to start comparing it to Led Zeppelin 4. So, Let's start with that show. Led Zeppelin 4 was released right after Led Zeppelin 3, where the introduction of Jimmy's initial idea and concepts for the band of adding some elements of folk music, adding acoustic guitar to everything, which mind you, in quite a few interviews, he does state that was one of the main reasons he wanted to start his own project in Led Zeppelin anyway. But this, these new ideas kind of turned on them, and they were starting to be called and considered a kind of um, a fad, and someone just riding on the success of blues rock at the time. And then they just bang, release Led Zeppelin 4, unnamed, goes platinum, massive success. They just, the innovations with recording, the innovations with guitar, the innovations with keys, drums, voice, lyrics. And the whole experience of listening to the album, both sides of the vinyl in one go, is just... I mean, yeah. So in a way, at the point of releasing Physical Graffiti, Led Zeppelin had already made their mark. They'd already just come out and declared 
We're here. You know what we're doing. We deserve to be here. We're cool dudes. And they had had already another moment to improve on that with House of the Holy. And mind you, ladies and gentlemen, if you are interested in these topics, talking about old albums, talking about new albums, and chatting shit about music, do consider subscribing down below to stay tuned for more. What, in my opinion, makes Physical Graffiti so great is that this is the second time that the band is back together in Headley Grange and looking to record new material. In Led Zeppelin IV, they'd already had that first instance of experimentation with new methods of recording. We can pull up the classic example of John Bonham playing the drums for When the Levee Breaks in that stay away hall of Headley Grange to get that natural reverb. And having already been there once, going back the second time with Jimmy Page as the producer and the natural instinct of all these wonderful musicians, it really was a momentous occasion to push these boundaries and look for new ways of recording these tracks and new ways of making them sound unique, even though they're all recorded there. And in a 2015 interview with a Dublin radio show, uh, which I'll just link down below, I remember Jimmy talking about how the recording process for the album went on. And he liked to compare it to the recording of Led Zeppelin 1. Jimmy and John Paul Jones, session musicians, they were always used to working with other people and having to adapt their playing. And you could sort of consider them experts in their own instrument. But this, these beautiful elements of session work come with a drawback that it's always working towards someone else's goal. So when they found John Bonham and when they found Rob Plant, they managed to put together a group act where each single one of these individuals was at the apex of their own field and they just shared these core elements of musicianship wherein if they played for themselves with their own musical identity and were just allowed free reign, given their shared musical taste and background, they would just come together. And as Jimmy said, this all results in Physical Graffiti, an album where you can clearly hear each and every one of these individuals doing their own thing. And you can, you can clearly hear every single one of them and how great they are, but it all comes together in such a way where the project doesn't kind of feel fragmented, if that makes sense. I mean, Jimmy calls it some weird alchemy that they have going on, but, but practically this is just good chemistry, you know? You've, you're lucky enough to find people you can work well with, you get along with, and it's really beautiful to stand back and watch when things like this happen. And to be fair, having arguably the best drummer of all time, aside from perhaps Mike Portnoy in John Bonham, really does help when it comes to things like this, but let's just put that aside for a moment. If uh, you're still listening, you're still watching, and you've found what I've said interesting, uh, do consider subscribing. As I just said, all these brilliant musicians working with virtually no filters on what they're allowed to do results in each and every one of them having a voice and distinguishing themselves, which in the album as a whole ends up giving it some of the widest range that we come to hear from the band up to that point and from that point onwards. We go from those bluesy, chunky, hard rock tones that they developed through the years in Led Zeppelin 1 and Led Zeppelin 2 and then 4, bringing in some of those folky, acoustically driven medleys that we'd heard in Led Zeppelin 3 and Led Zeppelin 4, even moving on from it with tracks like Trampled Underfoot, aka Brandy and Coke, if you know, you know, where they just kind of sit around, jam, give into a groove that John Paul Jones brought to the table, and they provide you with something that kind of feels funky, danceable, but at the same time, sort of unfunky, if that makes sense. But, to, but we'll get to that in about 20 to 30 seconds. And if you don't have the time or you can't find an occasion to sit down and really listen to the whole album beginning to end as, in a way, was common practice and intended both by the artists and the old school of just playing the whole vinyl on both sides to get the full experience. Let me highlight some of my favourite tracks for you just to get you going. To kind of hint at those medley ballad style songs, one of my favourite, favourite compositions is Ten Years Gone, where there's so many layered sort of instances of guitar going on and it truly is just an homage to the instrument, in my opinion. All the way down to the 
catchy, rhythmic, but still at the same time blues rock influenced Houses of the Holy, which always really confused me because, you know, there's the album and then there's the song. So before I'd actually gotten the set lists on the hand, I was I spent many years very confused. But brain farts aside. <laughs> And then, see, I told you, 20, 30 seconds, I'll get back to it. We come to those funky, kind of groovy tones that the band starts developing, which you could expect, but you wouldn't really associate with them up to this point in Trampled Underfoot and The Wanton Song. We can hear some of those influence, kind of like a, a Stevie Wonder, let's say, come into play, and you can hear them definitely playing in the pocket that John Paul Jones is going with. But then you have Jimmy Page and John Bonham lay it on the top of that, playing in the pocket, but still in a slightly displaced time, rhythmically speaking. So it feels very groovy, but it still has that Led Zeppelin identity to it, just pushing it forward. <laughs> and then, in my opinion, the best song of this album, and maybe one of the best songs that they've ever written. The album is topped off by Kashmir, and I don't really think I need to say too much about how instantly recognisable, unique, and smashing Kashmir is. <laughs> It's an eight minute song that unlike maybe Stairway, some parts can feel a bit quote unquote repetitive. Kashmir is the same riff for most of the song with elements just added onto it and articulating it further, but still it's the same core riff, but just the nature of the riff and the way it's played, it's just intoxicating and it just, and it distracts you from the fact that it's an eight minute song, but you never realize it because you just get into it. The end result, there's a film with Jimmy Page, The Edge and Jack White, where they all just sit down, talk about their own riffs, talk about how they like to approach music, where Jimmy explains Kashmir to them, and I'll link it down below for you because it's quite interesting to listen to. There should be a clip here on YouTube at least, where Jimmy explains that the riff came from a Middle Eastern sample of music. He just inverted it and just went with it and kept on going over it and over it and over it, adding on these cascading elements climbing down the scale as the basic riff is coming up. And then Robert Plant's lyrics just think of call back to a mystical journey that he and Jimmy Page went through near the shores of Morocco. And truly, it all just comes together for a wonderful or psychedelic piece of music, which in a way you wouldn't expect from them. But given all these innovations that have come together in this album, it doesn't seem unwarranted. It seems like it just fits where it should go. And here at the end of it all, if uh, you're still listening, you're still watching, and you've found what I've said interesting, uh, do consider subscribing. This is definitely not the last time we're going to talk about Led Zeppelin, so stay tuned for more. All that's left to say, really, is Physical Graffiti, in my opinion, is, if not the best, very close to being the best, both Led Zeppelin album of all time and overall studio recording of all time. And it really does highlight all the best things Led Zeppelin. And with this album, they really do cement themselves in pop culture and their music finds a place where it's just never going to leave the hearts of all these both older generations who still listen to this music as a part of their youth and identity and newer generations who find themselves drawn to it just to the quality and characteristics of the music itself. That being said, thank you very much for watching. I had a lot a lot of fun of listening to the album once again and just reading up on a couple of fun little stories to put together for you and um, I hope you found it interesting. If, um, if anything, hopefully I said some things that you either did not know or had not really thought about for a little while and it was really a lot of fun and I hope this pays my respects to the album in an appropriate way. Thank you very much for tuning in and we have made it. We are at 50. 
5-0 subscribers, and it feels really nice to um, have achieved, let's say, our first landmark, let's say, as a community, and do expect something cool to come at the weekend at the earliest to cement this occasion and just to celebrate it and do something um, a bit different. That's me, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, and um, go listen to the album or I will cry. <laughs>